Hi there, welcome back to JD Answers. Today I'll be reviewing the Vantru NP4 Pro. This is a three channel 4K Wi-Fi dash cam. But stay tuned to the end where I'll be showing you some driving footage. Now there's a lot to go over, so let's get into this. This is a front dash cam, inside cabin dash cam, and a rear camera. The MP4 Pro dash cam is perfect for family trips, Ubers, or even Lyft drivers. Let's go over the resolution first. There are several choices you could choose from. You could select 4K at 30 frames per second for the front dash cam and 1080p at 30 frames per second for the cabin and rear dash cam. Or you could select 720p for the cabin and the rear dash cam. Or you could select 2K at 30 frames per second for the dash cam and 1080p at 30 frames per second for the cabin and rear dash cam. Again, you could also select 720p for the cabin and rear dash cam. But there's more. You could even select 1080p or 720p for the front, the cabin, and the rear dash cam. And finally, 1080p at 30 frames per second for the front dash cam and 720p for at 30 frames per second for the cabin and rear dash cam. Now, the high resolutions provide value evidence like license plates and insurance claims or disputes. Here's a list of additional resolution choices. You could pause the video to review the choices. I'm personally going to set the dash cam resolution to 4K for the front and 1080p for the cabin and rear camera. I want the highest resolution in case anything happens. Now, the higher the resolutions, the more space the dash cam will need to save the driving footage. The dash cam supports up to 512 gigabyte micro SD card, allowing you to save more driving files. My recommendation is to purchase the maximum memory card. The dash cam is continually recording up to three cameras simultaneously. That means the SD card will be filling up quickly if you buy a lower gigabyte SD card. When you purchase a micro SD card, make sure it's a U3 A2 Class 10 SD card. And I put links in the description down below for recommended SD cards. I recommend formatting the SD card at least once a month to ensure the normal operation of the dash cam. The Vantru dash cam is equipped with the Sony Starvis 2 IMX678 sensor. The Sony Starvis advances the nighttime vision software and enhances the quality of the footage by reducing noise, improving contrast, and sharpening images for better visibility during the nighttime driving. The three-channel f1.8 aperture adopts the Sony Starvis 2 image sensor, which can provide better low-light performance and clarity. The Starvis sensor enables the dash cam to record images of moving vehicles more accurately and quickly without blurring or distortion. The infrared LED illuminates the surrounding area, allowing the dash cam to capture clear and detailed footage, even in complete darkness or low light conditions. You can set this to auto, on or off. I left mine to the default auto settings. The MP4 dash cam comes with HDR, also known as high dynamic range. You can set the HDR to on or off for the front dash cam, the inside cabin, and the rear camera separately. The HDR ensures clear and better image quality footage, allowing you to capture important details like license plates or road signs during day or nighttime driving. The Vantru dash cam has 360 degree full protection. This provides a vision of covering more than three lanes, minimizing surrounding blind spots and giving you a 360 degree protection. You can adjust the cabin up or down by 45 degrees. The rear camera can be adjusted by 360 degrees to help you record what's going on behind your car. Now here are the viewing angles of the cameras. The front is 158 degrees viewing angle. The inside is 160 degree viewing angle. The rear is 165 degrees viewing angle. The Vantru dash cam has two additional features that can assist in your camera angles. You can use a rotate display. This feature will flip the screen up and down by 180 degrees. So whatever you see in the bottom will flip and the same thing vice versa. You can use this feature for the front and cabin camera or you can use it for the rear camera. Here is an example.
or you could use a mirror feature. When it is on, the screen of the cabin and rear camera are displayed in mirror mode. Here is an example of that. Now the Van True Dash Cam also has a 3.19 inch IPS screen. Now this is large enough to play back videos or to adjust the settings. The Vantru Wi-Fi Dash Cam has a built-in 2.4 GHz and a 5 GHz Wi-Fi. Now there are three ways you could turn on the camera's Wi-Fi. You can push the right button of the Dash Cam, use voice control, or go to the menu and turn on Wi-Fi. After your phone successfully connects to the camera's Wi-Fi, you can connect the Vantru app. With the Vantru app, you can live video preview, change camera settings, play back videos, access videos and photos and download them. And then you can share those to your social media. So make sure to subscribe and select all notifications because I have a detailed review of the Vantru app. I will go over all the settings, how to view files, how to download them and how to share them. The Vantru app also supports OTA, which is over the air upgrades. After opening the app, if you receive an update reminder of the Dashcam software, please confirm the upgrade and then it will jump to the OTA upgrade interface and then upgrade. Now the Vantru 4 Pro Dashcam comes with GPS tracking. This is not a separate purchase like most Dashcams and most Dashcams they have that for at least $30. The GPS function can automatically correct the time and date in your area recording the location where the video was taken and the speed of the car at the time. In the Vantru app, you can select sync with phone and your Dashcam time will be synced with your cell phone's time. The GPS information is recorded along with the video. To view it, please download and install the Vantru app or the Vantru GPS player. The Vantru GPS player is available for download at Vantru.net. The Vantru GPS player can review videos with GPS route track records. They can also check the vehicle's locations, speed, and route on a map. This is a great tool for businesses or to track your teens to make sure they are where they said they would be. The dash cam also comes with a hands-free voice control. You can use this 12 voice commands to go hands-free. This allows you to easily control your dash cam without taking your hands off the steering wheel for safe driving. Next we have loop recording and default is one minute. You can choose one minute, three minute or five minute loop recordings. Loop recording will automatically overwrite the oldest video once the SD card is full and will start recording a new video. The normal operation of loop recording function is very dependent on the speed of the memory card. So please format the memory card regularly to avoid problems such as excessive memory card files and card aging that affects the normal loop recording. Now the good thing the Dashcam supports SD cards up to 512 gigabyte, which allows you to save more driving files. Even with loop recording, you may still get a message that says card is full. This is because you have too many G sensor files. For more information on loop recording, I'll put a link in the description down below. Loop recording and G sensor go hand in hand. So make sure you watch those videos to get a better understanding of loop recording and G sensor. Now the feature I really like is format reminder. You can select 15 days or one month or off. The default is off. In case you forget to format the memory card regularly, you can choose this feature. When time is up, you can choose OK to format or choose next. Don't choose next. Choose OK to format the micro SD card because once it's full, it's not recording anymore. So that's why this format reminder is a good tool. The Vantru Dash Cam comes with G sensor. We just talked about this, which is also known as gravity sensor. When the car is hit by a collision or vibration, the recorder will automatically trigger and lock the current video. When it senses a vibration, you will have three videos locked, the front dash cam, the inside cabin, and the rear dash cam. This will help you restore the scene with three angles protection from false claims. The G sensor has three axis feature. The three axis G sensor is a three axis assimilator in a camera that senses sudden accelerations, stops, collisions, and will automatically protect footage surrounding the incident. It measures movement up, down, left, right, backwards, and forward through a three-dimensional axis. 
you can set each axis separately, which is a good thing. The G center value in each direction can be selected to 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, or you can even set it off. The higher the sensitivity level, the easier it is to trigger an event recording. G sensor is most sensitive when it's set to 5. Now the front and rear cam, you can select it 1 through 5. Left and right, you can select 1 through 5. Up and down, you can select 1 through 5. And I believe the default is 3. Now, if you've seen an incident happening, but not happening to you, you could lock that file and it would not be overridden. You could say lock video using the voice commands, or you could press the orange button on the left side of the dash cam to lock the video. Then there is time lapse. The time lapse speeds up the video, which records more with less file space. The time lapse features allow three channel dash cam to shoot continuously at a low frame rate, allowing 24 times more recording time on the same memory card. You can choose to enable this to one frames per second, five frames per second, 10 frames per second, or 15 frames per second. Next is 24 hour parking mode for 24 hour parking protection. You can choose the parking mode you need, including collision detection, motion detection, low bit rate recording, and low frame rate recording. Now, time-lapse video recording and parking modes can only be enabled one at a time. When one is enabled, the others will be automatically disabled. To use parking mode, a Vantu hardwire kit is needed, and it's sold separately. Let me explain what a hardwire kit does. A hardwire kit comes with a low voltage protection feature that would automatically turn off the dash cam when the car battery voltage drops a certain level. This helps to prevent the car's battery from being drained, ensuring that the car can start up normally the next time you use it. The dash cam comes with low light night vision in parking mode. When turned on, it can optimize the recording effect of the videos in parking mode. This function is in open mode by default. It will be triggered only by after entering the parking mode. It will not affect normal recording. First, we have motion detection for parking mode. Motion detection is a great feature when you park or leave your vehicle for a long period of time. That's because it can automatically detect any movement as well as a change in light that is given by the lens of the camera. This three channel dash cam will record 10 seconds before and 30 seconds after motion is detected. The motion detection area, the detection range of the front and rear camera can be set on the dash cam. This feature is only available when motion detection parking mode is on. You can select 1x, 2x, 3x, or 5x. 5x is the is full detection mode. Next, we have low bit rate recording for parking mode. This motion of recording conserves space on the SD card, but is less efficient. Low bit rate recording decreases the quality of the video to maximize the recording quantity. The low bit rate recording aims to help you save hours of footage as small files to your SD card. Then there is low frame rate mode. When the low frame rate mode is selected, the camera will record according to your selected among, which it could be at 1 frames per second, 5 frames per second, 10 frames per second, or 15 frames per second. The Vantu dash cam has a feature called Mylas Statistics. The dash cam records and analyzes the user's drive time, driving mileage, altitude, driving speed, and other information through GPS. But make sure to download it as a PDF now again, you or JPG file you and save it locally. All right, we're going to get app. out of Another feature it has is number plate. You can select a number or letters to be set. What this is, is like a name tag on your driving footage. You could put the driver's name, the vehicle's license plates, or the vehicle number. It's really up to you and then this plate will be displayed on your recording. Now make sure to subscribe to JD Answer for a step-by-step -step installation of this camera because I got a video of that coming out soon. Now let me show you some driving footage and you can see the dash cam put to work.
right, what did you think? Is this the right dance cam for you? If it is, I'll put links in the description down below. If this video was helpful for you, please like this video and it really helps the channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and select all notifications because again, I got the installation of this dash cam, the menu review, the app review, and the unboxing of this dash cam. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.